You may remember hearing on the Two Lost Radio News recently about whale stranding off the Isle of Skye and also about a plea for funding for a thing called a whale pontoon. Well, I'm joined on the line from Ullapool by the man behind all that. It's Noel Hawkins, the area coordinator for the British Divers Marine Life Rescue. Hello, Noel. Hi, Alex. So, first of all, perhaps you could just remind us about what, what happened in this incident off Skye last week. Last Monday, I was notified we're part of BDMLR. It's a national network. They received a call from the Hebridean Whale and Dolphin Trust and some locals on Sky that a pod of unknown whales or dolphin at that time were acting suspiciously at Staffin. Myself and one other medic from Ullapool drove over. We arrived about 10 in the evening and we could observe them out in the bay. They were acting funnily. It looked as though they were supporting one that was in difficulty in the middle. They did look as if they were going to head out and then turn back. We went down to Brigand Bay and watched them until about one in the morning. Lost sight of them in the dark, so headed back to our car. At two in the morning, we resumed looking. We couldn't find them, so we started driving up and down the coast. Sadly, at about 3.30 in the morning, we received a call that uh, members of the public had seen them coming ashore exactly where we'd been standing waiting. So we headed down with four other medics that arrived from elsewhere by that point. Um, We discovered 21 whales scattered along the shoreline in severe difficulty, bashing on rocks in tide coming in. That's terrible. Something's driving them to to make them stay there and eat despite being bashed on the rocks and stranded. Sadly, once they're ashore, it's very difficult for them to get off unless the tide rises around them and picks them up. Um, The reasons behind why they come in, there's lots of speculation and there probably are a multitude of reasons. In this incident, we strongly suspect there was a a senior female member of the pod. So it was pilot whales, by the way. And pods such as pilot whales are matriarchal. They follow the elder females and they're very, very loyal. The female in question had got into difficulty. She was trying to give birth. We think it had breached after an analysis later. Um, We believe she was the one that came ashore and the others stayed with her. They're so loyal. They will actually put their own lives at risk while there's one in difficulty. So it was, it was group support? Yeah. You're talking of group support, you guys must be really dedicated. That must have been three or four hours for you to even get there, and then you spent the whole night on the shore seeing what you could do for the whales. Sadly, yeah. BDMLR is quite a funny organisation. They've been on the go for a number of years, since uh, the late 80s. During a, It was formed following a, a seal outbreak of flu down south. They are very active, but they're they're quite unknown, totally self-funded, and it's all volunteers, nobody's paid, and reliant on people becoming involved and supporting us. I've been trying to get word out along the West Coast. I got involved in 2012 due to, I was working on a tour boat in Ullapool, got interested in the wildlife, took a course with them, and realised we were totally short of people along the coast here. Some of you might recall an incident in Durness in 2011. There was a report of about six pilot whales coming ashore then. When medics arrived, there was actually about around 70. They managed to save over 40. It was quite amazing. But at that point, it really highlighted the Highlands as totally under-resourced. So there was a drive. That's when I got in touch with them and did my training. But we're still very exposed along the West Coast, considering we've got some of the, the highest cetacean activity, whale and dolphin, coming along our coast and waters. We're very undermanned and very underfunded. Hence the public appeal for funding. Just tell us what this is all about. Yeah, we use uh, pontoons. They were actually pontoons that were developed out in New Zealand, Project Jonah. Uh, New Zealand's very ahead of us on uh, this game. They started out similarly as a voluntary charity. They've actually been backed by the government over there, so they're ahead of us in terms of personnel and resources. But these pontoons that were developed are a mat system. that The pontoons attach on either side. It's two tubes, a tube on either side. You inflate them with uh, diving gas bottles. These not only float them when the water comes in, it also gives you control on the animal so it doesn't take off before it's ready because they need rehabilitated going into the water. And it also allows you to keep them upright and stable, which is crucial to their well-being. When they're trapped on their side, uh, they lose their equilibrium and they also start getting problems with uh, blood circulation and their internal organs can fail. So these pontoons are crucial to saving animals. So it's a sort of floating dry dock for whales? Yeah, it's very similar to the diving systems used to retrieve wrecks and things, just a smaller scale. Right. Now, talking of divers, you mentioned there, it is the British Divers Marine Life Rescue, but am I right in thinking that people that want to join don't actually have to be divers? Sure, we really need to emphasise that. It was founded by divers originally, and they've stuck with the name historically. But anybody interested at all is welcome. 
if people are going into the water, obviously they need protective clothing if it's for any duration of time. We do encourage uh, dry suits or ideal wetsuits at a push, but then there are time restrictions on how long people can go in the water due to cold. And obviously human life is priority in all these incidences. But even people interested in being involved in support, when we go into the water, we need beach support. We need coordinators to check on who's there so we don't lose someone in the water, for example. And also fundraising activities, moral support even is a huge thing, such as what happened on Sky. People showing up, and I, I can't applaud the, the population of Sky enough. They came along and supported us, helping in the water, helping us, offering support, and sending down even sandwiches, coffee, and soup. When after 12 hours in the water, freezing cold, you suddenly realise that coffee's a great thing. Even around Gerlach, Nick with the boat there, he came over and helped. So really there's openings for absolutely anybody from any walk of life that wants to help you by the sound of it? Anybody, and we'd welcome not just people getting active. They, if they want to support us financially, we'd really welcome that. We're very, very short up here. And we recently got support from Alapal Harbour, so we've bought a, a rescue trailer and we've basic kit primarily to look after the people going out. Dolphin pontoons, they cost almost £3,000. A, a whale pontoon is just over £4,000, which is a lot of money. Sadly, with people being so stretched out, we didn't have any available here. There's one over on Lewis, but we couldn't get that in time due to the, the ferry, etc. The other ones are all down the west coast and south. So we found ourselves stuck in staff and waiting for people to arrive from Dundee and Edinburgh with kit, which is just ridiculous, really, when time is such a factor in saving these lives. So... That's why we've set up the appeal. We're asking if people can help us to fund even just one pontoon for now, that if it was based possibly in Alapal, we can hopefully get it up to as far afield as Cape Raff, down to Sky, for example. All right. So how would people donate if they want to contribute? If they'd like to support BDMLR in general, they're available online, bdmlr.org.uk. If they'd like to support this specific appeal, if they go to justgiving.com forward slash bdmlr hyphen NW Highlands. So it's justgiving.com forward slash BDMLR hyphen NW Highlands. And every penny we raise there is going to be kept locally and go towards supporting our wildlife along the coast of the Northwest Highlands. Excellent. I'm sure we all wish you all the best with that appeal. In the meantime, if somebody does think they've spotted a cetacean in trouble on the coast, what should they do about that? Yeah, that's very important too, because we had another incident actually last week where a humpback got entangled in fishing gear up at Helmsdale. And sadly, people didn't even realise we exist at the time. But when they did find out, they got in touch and it was great. So we're trying to encourage people to be aware that we'll help stranded animals, any animals basically. And we can actually go out. We've developed, a, it's a new system, the first one in Europe, We've got a disentanglement team that will go out and actually disentangle whales even if they're moving when they've got ropes and things tangled. Um, to do so, they can go to the website bdmlr.org.uk. Uh, we've also got an emergency number, which if I could give that to you, it's uh, 01825 765546. And that number is manned through office hours and it goes to emergency volunteers in the evenings and weekends and they will notify. If something comes in, we'll get people out to check and we've got a, a network that sets off uh, texting available people and requesting people to start moving in instances that look like we need medics at that site. OK. Just one final thing before you go. The medics, if somebody wants to volunteer to become trained up as a marine rescue medic, does that mean they actually need to have some sort of medical or veterinary background? No, not at all. We have got vets and veterinary nurses involved. They're great because we do require vets on, on site to assist us. But the normal medics, uh, they get called a medic for doing the course. It's a one-day course. It's a morning spent in the classroom learning about the theory of the animals, identification and physiology, etc. And then we actually do an afternoon practical where we go down to the shore. We've got inflatable dolphins and minky whale that are filled up with water and they're actually real weight and size. And we use the pontoons and go through a simulation of what would be involved. It does give people an idea. Obviously, it's not real life with animals thrashing and that but the incident in Sky for example we'd only just recently put on a course thanks to High Life Highlands actually gave us funding so we managed to get a course in Nullipal and we had 17 new medics, one came down with me on the night and four others showed up the next day and just having that knowledge they were aware of what to do and help us with manoeuvring the animals, looking after the animals, maintaining them when they were stuck on the rocks all day and it's invaluable training for 
incidents such as this. So I'd, I'd really welcome and try to encourage anyone to get involved. It will save wildlife when it happens. It's not if it happens, it, it's when it happens. It will happen again. Well, that's a, a sad thought, but good to know that there are people there willing to dedicate time and effort to helping the animals when they do get into trouble. Thank you very much for joining us on to Australia today, Noel, and maybe we'll hear from you again in the near future how you've got on with the fundraising appeal. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, hopefully it'll be with good news. Thanks to everyone for support. There's been some great, great people there. We've had school children in the area donating their own money and going online, and it's, it's been really, really good, actually. It's good to see the Highlands supporting their wildlife. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.